tomb story. I know, I know you don't want to tell it. I know folk can't handle it. I know they'll look at you funny if you tell them. I know they'll turn their nose up at you when you tell them how bad your past smell. I know they'll call you crazy. I know they'll disqualify you when you're up for ministry service. They'll tell you that you don't fit the bill, but thanks be unto God, it is in fact my tomb that qualified me for ministry. Who better to tell folk that God can raise you up than somebody that was in their tomb and God brought them out. Preach you ever you ain't got no help because they sitting up here today like you've been in church all your life. You might have been in church all your life, but you did some tomb dirt. And had it not been for the Lord, you would still be in a mess. Sharing the tomb story levels the playing field. <laughs> I said sharing the tomb story levels the playing field. Because hearing other folk cute salvation church stories will have you thinking that nobody was doing low down stuff but you. Lord help me Holy Ghost. I said hearing folks stand up test the line about how God saved them will have you thinking that nobody did nothing foul but you. Don't sit there and act like you ain't never been around some sanctimonious, holier than thou religious people who always want to talk about how wonderful they are. And it will, if you're not careful, it will mess you up and you will come to church thinking that everybody is here because we are perfect. But the only reason we're here is because we know we need the word of God and we need it more so now than ever before because some of us are just a mean vexation away from going back to doing some tomb activity but God I just want to tell you thank you that if you got the power to bring me out you got the power to keep me shake somebody's hand and tell him he'll keep you if you want to be kept whatever took Lazarus out it was so bad that Jesus had to call his name in order to get him out. He, he didn't stand at the tomb and, and say, I, I want to call the one that I love who was sick, like his sister said word. Uh, the one I love is sick. I want to call that one out. He, he didn't say, I want to call out the one with le leprosy to come forth. He, uh, because had he done that, uh, there would have been a host of people, Lord help me Jesus, uh, that would have came forth. He didn't stand there and say, I want to call the one that was lying from the grave. Because had he done that, it would have been a whole lot of people that came. He didn't stand there and say, I want to call forth the one that was fallen the one that got HIV AIDS y'all ain't saying that now. he didn't stand there and say I want to call the one that was practicing in homosexuality no he called Lazarus name cause if he called him by his condition there would have been a whole lot of there would have been a whole lot of people that would have came out. Watch this. So he called him by his name and not his condition. Because I need you to know that your condition is not qualified to keep you in your tomb. You got to come out because there's a greater work that I have in store for your life. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm not my condition. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm I'm not in my condition. Yeah. He called Lazarus' name. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Why? Because all of us in here are sick. Lord Jesus. Everybody in this tomb is sick from one reason or the other. I know this is a difficult message because in the church we have engrafted the spirit of ranking sin. And we don't understand that God is not in the business of ranking sin. He didn't call Lazarus out by his condition. He called him by his name. Shake somebody's hand and tell them again, I'm not in my condition.
Yeah, there's so many other folk in the grave because of various and many reasons. Jesus can't just call him by his condition, but he called him by his name because your condition does not define who you are in God. In other words, you may have done what you did, but what you did is not who you are. Good God Almighty. I'm going to say it again because it needs to get in somebody's spirit. Yeah, I did what I did, but I'm not what I did. Uh, uh, somebody ain't got it in their spirit yet. Look at somebody and say, yeah, I'm guilty. Uh, come on, holy people. I said, look at somebody and tell them, yeah, I'm guilty. I did what I did, but I'm not what I did. I'm not my condition. That's why he called Lazarus by his name. Shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm not my condition. He stood at the grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. I need you to understand that Jesus' crowd was intended to be and should always forever be a judgment-free crowd. Point at somebody and tell them we're supposed to be a judge-free a judgment-free crowd. Some of y'all ain't talking to nobody. I said, point at somebody and tell them we're supposed to be a judgment-free crowd. Because every last one of us had grave stench on us when he called our name. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but Peter had cussing stench all on his life. Matthew had deceiving stench all on his life. Oh, come on, John and his brother now, James had arrogant stench all on them. Mary had prostitution stench all on her life. Judas had betrayal stench all on his life. At the end of the day, everybody in here smell bad. But hold up. I hear somebody calling my name. I might smell bad, but he's calling my name. I may have done what they said, but he's calling my name. I'm guilty as charged, but I hear him calling my name. 